Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Julie. I am a homeschooling mom of five children and this channel is basically all about my DIY life. I am slowly but surely renovating my entire builder grade home all while living on a single teacher's income. So if that kind of content interests you, stick around. I have lots of great makeovers, renovations, thrifting videos, all of the good stuff. Tips on how to do things yourself, how to use power tools, how to get projects done on a budget and in the most efficient manner. Today I actually have a really fun project. I am doing a small laundry closet refresh. This closet used to be absolutely blank. It was literally a box with one small three foot section of wire shelving. It was completely inefficient. It wasted a ton of space and I needed room to store all the things. I have one tiny little hallway closet and it just wasn't cutting it for our family size. <laughs> I'm gonna bring you along on the journey. Obviously I don't have video of the original makeover that I did on this laundry room, but I will have a completely detailed post laying out every single thing that I did to this laundry room up until this point and I will link it below for you so you can go ahead and check that out if you are interested in any of the projects that happened in here. But right now I'm doing a complete clean. I'm finishing up parts of this little tiny renovation. Little detail issues and I am giving the shelves a new coat of top coat that has a satin finish with polycrylic so that it actually shines and deepens the color a little bit more. I'm actually finally going to install a new light fixture as well. So let's get into all of that fun part of the project and yeah, let's have some fun. So I need it to be about half the chain height. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight eight chain lengths <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'll just take a wrench and I will take off eight chain lengths and then I'm gonna need the base that attaches to the ceiling from here which I can get at the hardware store okay so I uninstalled that light fixture up there and there's only two wires there's supposed to be three there's only two and I'm not an electrician and <laughs> the light that I want to put up there has three wires and the two that are supposed to go with those aren't colored so I have no idea which is the hot wire and which is <laughs> um, the not hot wire the neutral <laughs> so because I'm not an electrician and I don't know much about electrical I actually called my dad so he's gonna come and help me I did go ahead and buy this, which covers up the hole and helps you mount the light fixture to the ceiling. So <clears throat> that's good. You're gonna need one of these if your light doesn't come with one. My light, I bought at a thrift store for $2, I think. So I definitely, it didn't have this. So I needed it. But until my dad comes over here to help me fix the light, because I went ahead and uninstalled the light, I have no light to do any extra work in the closet. So I'm gonna have to use a bright light to <laughs> to put the polycrylic on the shelves. And that's just the way that it goes sometimes with DIY. You get into it and then you discover it's a lot more complicated than you thought. And because I don't wanna be electrocuted or destroy my house or set a fire or anything like that, I'm going to defer to the professional my dad is a professional electrician. He <clears throat> is actually a, a licensed contractor. So there's that. Let's go ahead and get to poly curly doing the top coat on these shelves. I had done previously um, a coat of wipe on poly, but you can't tell. And definitely the texture on the shelves themselves, you can't tell either. They just gather dust so much and it just makes them look really dull and not as pretty as I would like. I do like to have a little bit of sheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply probably two coats of a polycrylic. So let's get to that. I went ahead and dusted the shelves and then I cleaned them and I've let them dry now. So they should be ready to receive a top coat. That is the first coat and I'm gonna wash my brush in between each coat but also I wanted to remind you to make sure to go back for any drips that may happen along the way and once it starts drying 
just kind of let it go because if you use your brush too much then the brush strokes will show won't look so great so all right we're gonna let this dry okay so my dad installed this but he got frustrated about halfway through because he didn't want to read the instructions so I'm going to attempt to take it apart and mark my hot wire with a black marker and install it the correct way because I want the prettiness. It's kind of unneeded. I mean, it's actually installed here, but. that seemed needlessly complicated and the directions were not correct anyway. Either that or my the box for the light is too recessed to do it correctly so I actually had to turn it around. And then the screws got stripped so I ended up having to use a butter knife instead of my electric drill to screw them in and undo them and redo the wiring. So basically you want your hot with your hot, your neutral with your neutral, and your <clears throat> ground with your ground. There was a teeny tiny ground wire up there, barely noticeable, but um, I got it. I didn't know if I would for a minute there. Look at that, $2 light fixture, 30 minutes of frustration, and a $9 ceiling mount kit from Home Depot. So $11 for a really pretty upgrade for my light. The first coat of polycrylic has now dried, so that means I get to do a second coat before I get to put this whole thing back together. So let's go ahead and get to that. actually got this container for three dollars at the Target dollar shop and these the vintage clothespins came from a thrift store for two dollars last piece of the puzzle I did not stain this these pieces of wood before I put them together because I didn't think about it until it was already put together and then I didn't want to take it back apart because I'd used wood glue. So the insides of these tiny little cracks have no stain in them and it has bothered me <clears throat> ever since I put it together like a year ago. So <clears throat> I'm going to take the time to sit here with some q-tips and I'm going to stain the inside of these with some q-tips. That was painless. So those little tiny details that sometimes make the biggest difference, it's crazy. I completely replaced the vinyl flooring. I installed shiplap, I painted the entire closet, and then I made my own open shelving using common lumber. And I have a couple of videos on how to make cheap, ugly wood look pretty so that you can use it in projects like this in your own home. And I will link that up here. I also have a post dedicated to how I build my shelf brackets and it's super easy and they're extremely cheap and they just add so much character to a space. And I apologize for my raspy voice, I actually am getting a cold, so we carry on. Another thing that I did for this laundry closet, the sides, the flooring, the walls, and the shelves was build a little bespoke doorway in here to hold my water access panels. Anybody that has a laundry room has one of these and they are hideous, but you have to have access to them. So I made a tiny little door for it and I think actually instead of just hiding it, it actually made it more charming and added more character to the space than if I would have simply tried to hide it. So that was a really fun project and I go into all of those details on my post also. Super easy to build and I just love it. It's actually one of my favorite things about this space. I also used a peg rail 
over on this side of the closet that I thrifted for a dollar and it was actually missing a peg, which turned out to be Providence because that missing peg was the perfect spot for me to actually use a conduit hanger and install it in where the peg would have been to hold my Nor Norwex mop. So it worked out beautifully and this little $1 peg rail was the perfect thing for hanging my steam mop and my iron. It worked out great. I did a lot of problem solving for this room and I'm actually not even going to be done even after this refresh. I plan on building doors specifically for this spot. We originally had bifold doors and that was one of the biggest changes I made right away as I uninstalled the bifold doors. So I'm actually going to build a couple of doors that swing out like this and I'm going to take you guys along with me when I do it. So make sure you stay tuned for that video.